We talked about the pharynx and the respiratory system, but uh, two parts of the pharynx play an important role in the digestive system as well. It's the oropharynx and the laryngeopharynx. So it, they serve double duty. Because they pass food and are subject to abrasion, they have a stratified squamous epithelium. Um, they uh, are voluntary, the outside layer is voluntary, so it's skeletal muscle. Um, the nasopharynx is a pseudostratified, uh, simple epithelium with cilia on it. Um, so the epithelial change is the biggest, the biggest difference. And um, so that's really all they, they, we have to say about the pharynx. It, other than that, it's the same as what we have already discussed. The esophagus is simply a tube that goes from the laryngeopharynx, from basically the larynx um, at the epiglottis, in front of the epiglottis, and down through the diaphragm uh, and joins into the stomach. So it facilitates swallowing. Um, it uh, passes down through the mediastinum uh, where the heart uh, is found. Um, so it passes along with the trachea. It's um, it has a stratified squamous epithelium as well, um, which is different than the stomach. So it um, the stomach is a simple columnar epithelium. There are glands in the submucosa. Because it's a stratified squamous epithelium, you can't have goblet cells to make mucus, but you need mucus to to facilitate swallowing. So there are mucus glands in the submucosa uh, that that squirt mucus ahead of the swallowed bolus of food uh, and facilitate your swallowing. Um, the the muscular layer is interesting in that it is uh, skeletal muscle, voluntary skeletal muscle in the upper third. And the lower third is an involuntary smooth muscle. In between, it's a mixture of both. So that the act of swallowing is voluntary at first, uh, but as soon as it gets down a certain way, it, be it becomes involuntary. Um, it is embedded in other tissues, so there's not a serosa, it's not in a cavity, so there is a connective tissue outside layer, uh, and which is called an adventitia. So it ends up looking like this. You can see that there's a stratified squamous epithelium here, uh, and that there are there are ducts for uh, for the glands that secrete the mucus. The esophagus ends up going into the stomach. And, uh, in class, we talked about some of the histology of the stomach and some of the things that the stomach does, but we didn't we didn't touch too much on the gross anatomy. So that's what this is for. There are various regions of the stomach. Uh, the area that's where the lower esophageal um, sphincter is, is located right up against the diaphragm, right below the heart. So it's called the cardiac region. The bit that domes up above that is the fundus. The, most of, the, of it is the body and then uh, it becomes a um, kind of a funnel-shaped bit called the pylorus. There is a greater and lesser curvature, so the picture looks like this. Where the esophagus comes in, right here, is the cardia region. This is the fundus, this is the body, this is the pylorus, and this is the pyloric sphincter, uh, the valve at the end. Uh, there are three layers in in the muscularis. There is a um, a longitudinal layer, a circular layer, and an oblique layer. 
it's the only part of the alimentary canal with three layers. Um, you'll notice that the inside of the stomach is got all kinds of folds. Uh, it's for surface area and to allow the stomach to expand. Uh, it's kind of like an accordion sort of thing. And those are called the rugae, um, the, the folds. Um, you will note that the rugae uh, mostly run kind of in this pattern that follows the curvature. The outside of the stomach, so to the, uh, to the left side of the stomach, it's called the greater curvature. On the right side of the stomach is the lesser curvature. The stomach is suspended by uh, basically mesenteries. Uh, and they have a specific name. They, they, and these mesenteries have got quite a bit of fat in them. So they're called omentum. Uh, so the... Uh, the lesser curvature of the stomach is actually attached uh, to the liver. To, so uh, the, the serous membrane surrounds the liver, comes together, forms like a mesentery, the lesser omentum, that extends to the lesser curvature of the stomach. Then it surrounds the stomach um, as the visceral uh, peritoneum uh, of the stomach. And then it comes together again to form uh, this very long and large uh, mesentery, as it were, called the greater omentum. And the greater omentum actually hangs down uh, over the small intestines, kind of like an apron, before it uh, attaches back to the body wall. All of this is the greater omentum. Um, a lot of belly fat uh, when people have protruding abdomens is the fat that's in the greater omentum. Not all of it, but it's, it's a contributing factor to that. This is a, a picture. So this part is the lesser omentum. This part is the greater omentum. The stomach is supplied by um, sympathetic and parasympathetic <coughs> excuse me, um, nerves. The sympathetics uh, slow down what's going on in the stomach. The parasympathetics stimulate the stomach. Um, there's a lot of blood goes to the stomach, um, it, but all of it exits the um, aorta via the celiac trunk. We have the gastroduodenal, the left gastric, the right gastric. There's a number of, of branches off of the celiac trunk or branches of the celiac trunk, like the splenic, that will supply the stomach. All of the blood leaving the capillaries of the stomach end up going to the, back to the liver via the hepatic portal system. As I said, there are uh, three layers of smooth muscle, um, and uh, the mucosal layer is divided into these pits. I talked about the specifics of the cells in class, so I'm not going to do it on this video uh, very much, but there are basically um, four types of cells. There are the chief cells that are involved with uh, producing pepsinogen, which is the digestive enzyme that breaks down proteins and in an inactive form. It gets activated in the stomach by hydrochloric acid and turns into pepsin. There are enteroendocrine cells that control the, uh, the processes in the rest of the alimentary canal based on stimulation in the stomach. There are... Um, the parietal cells that make hydrochloric acid uh, for denaturing proteins and all the things that hydrochloric acid does 
for us in the stomach um, and it makes intrinsic factor which lets us absorb vitamin B12 in our diet. The mucus next cells secrete an acidic mucus that um, is partially for protection but partially for um, just kind of lubricating. The surface epithelium, the mucosal cells, are almost entirely goblet cells and they secrete an alkaline mucus that protects the stomach from auto-digesting. The, these all talk about what we talked about in class.